we'll be talking a lot about the psychology of investors in this book mm. because the chief enemy mm. of the investor mm. is likely to be himself hello everyone welcome to the first episode of our podcast on behavioral finance we at bajaj finser amc have adopted a behavioral finance based investment approach and we have here with us our chief investment officer mr nimesh chandan who has been a behavioral finance enthusiast over the last 15 years across this episode and many more we will demystify and decode multiple facets of behavioral finance so nimesh since this is the first session on behavioral finance let's explore the basics a little bit tell us a little bit about behavioral finance behavioral finance uh, lies at the intersection of psychology and finance it is a branch of behavioral economics which focuses on the psychological influences and biases that affect investment decision making or financial decision making by investors and uh, practitioners right. behavioral finance is able to better understand or explain the market anomalies uh that we see a sharp rise or rallies in the market or sudden and sharp falls in the market so they are better explained the market movements are better explained in behavioral finance than what we have seen in traditional finance now typically traditional finance uh works on efficient market hypothesis where mm. they explain that uh, markets are always efficient which means mm. investors are extremely rational mm. the information that is there in the market is fully captured in the price so mm. you cannot outperform or underperform the market mm. and uh, because everybody has complete knowledge about this mm. there are no bull bust cycles in the market obviously practically this is not possible yeah. so uh, behavioral finance mm. considers the opposite stance that people are normal they are not completely rational mm. they are driven by emotions mm. and tries to explain then the investing behavior mm. and how it impacts markets in a better way uh, than traditional finance god god so why is it important from an investor's point of view to understand behavioral finance see temperament hmm. is almost as much or more important than knowledge when it comes to investing a lot of people follow the book uh, intelligent investor yeah. as a one of the basic books for investing in this book in the very introduction uh, benjamin graham writes that we'll be talking a lot about the psychology of investors in this book yeah. because the chief enemy mm. of the investor mm. is likely to be himself so what benjamin graham is showing is that uh, your emotions your biases your temperament impacts your investment uh, returns and that is important to understand behavioral finance explains where people make mistakes as an individual or as a crowd mm. um it explains why these mistakes happen and what can you do to avoid them right i look at it uh, in two parts the importance of behavioral finance is in understanding and reducing own be- our own behavioral mistakes right at the same time it gives you an opportunity hmm. to take advantage of the crowd's mistakes so this okay. is where behavioral finance becomes important for investors to understand right so if i've understood this correctly somewhere we're bordering on biases as a concept absolutely so right. studying biases is an important part right. of behavioral finance right. now bias as if we look at it a technical definition right. it is about giving disproportionately high favor hmm. or weightage hmm. uh to or against a particular idea right. in a more practical way hmm. uh our thinking is actually studied as two parts system 1 and system 2 by psychologists system 1 is a reflexive thinking hmm. pattern hmm. where if somebody throws a ball at you hmm. and you duck hmm. uh that's a reflexive action Uh, you don't wait to calculate the trajectory of the ball the speed of the ball whether it will hit you or no it's a reflexive system and it's a immediate response system the system 2 is a more reflective and deliberate system if somebody asks you to 
uh, multiply 67 by 130. Now mm -hmm. that's where system 2 starts coming in. System 2 requires a lot of effort. It mm -hmm. takes time and energy. Right. So as we go about with our lives, in a lot of decisions, we tend to create shortcuts or mm -hmm. heuristics to make our decisions easier. Right. So we live a comfortable day-to-day -day life by taking certain decisions on shortcut basis. But these shortcuts are not accurate. Hmm. So when you come to financial markets, hmm. these same heuristics or shortcuts or habits that we have, hmm. because they are not very accurate, biases creep in there. And we tend to overweight certain situation or underweight certain data. Hmm. And that leads to impact on our returns. Hmm. Investment hmm. is many a times counterintuitive and you require a second level thinking. So these biases do impact our decision making. It is important to identify and rebias. So Nimesh, if we look at the two most prevailing emotions that govern markets, I would understand it could be greed and fear. But are these the only two emotions or there could be more? Greed and fear definitely are the most talked about actually mm -hmm. in markets. But there are many different emotions and biases that affect uh, individual as well as crowd decision making. Greed and fear are part of what we call as overreaction, either okay. on the positive side or the negative side when you're very fearful. Yeah. There are many other biases that impact decision making. Some of the common ones are overconfidence, uh, confirmation bias, loss aversion, regret aversion. Hmm. On the underreaction side also, there are biases like anchoring and representativeness bias, hmm. which lead to underreaction, which means people don't fully incorporate new information into their decision making. So that yeah. leads to an underreaction. Yeah. So there are many that uh, impact uh, your decision making. Okay, there's an interesting thing that you said there, which is confirmation bias. I've heard about that a lot, but you know, for our audience, could you explain that a little bit in detail? So there is an interesting quote by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle in the Sherlock Holmes, one of the Sherlock Holmes novels. Hmm. Uh, he tells Watson that uh, it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the data. Right. Otherwise, you twist the facts to fit into your theory rather than the other way around. Mm. So we tend to do that. Whenever we mm. make an investment, we start looking for reassurance or confirmation mm. that we are right. Mm. And hence we start collecting those data points which actually confirm our view mm. and which add to like, you know, our uh, beliefs. We tend to meet people who mm. agree with us. So mm. many a times you meet analysts who have the same stock as a buy recommendation or security as a buy recommendation. Uh, we love to meet the management of these companies because their managements and promoters tend to be positive about the business they need to be. Hmm. So we take every bit of positive information. Hmm. We select, we cherry pick the positive information and use that information. Now this leads to certain risks. Uh, typically confirmation bias hmm. leads to overconfidence which can lead to either high leverage in your position or very high concentration of a particular security in your portfolio. So that comes as a risk. Right. So then just to extrapolate from that, if I need to be validated, then there could also be a certain set of beliefs that I reject, right? So would that also hold true then rejecting ideas that, you know, I don't conform to? Is that also a part of confirmation bias? That's an interesting point. So that's the other side of the same coin, mm -hmm. uh, what we call as cognitive dissonance, that okay. when uh, we come across two thoughts which are conflicting, hmm. uh, or a thought, a new data point that has come up, hmm. which is conflicting with our beliefs, right. or pre-held beliefs, we try to rationalize it. It is like a, a psychological scotoma where we hmm. turn a blind eye towards anything negative uh, hmm. about or risks that come up against our initial investment. Now, uh, typically when we invest in a particular stock and a negative news comes, hmm. uh, which makes something else more attractive, we tend to rationalize and we go to great lengths in justifying that no, the initial decision was right. Okay. Even when the initial argument for buying that company or a stock hmm. has actually faded. Right. 
Yeah. Now, that leads to, again, some problems in our investment decision making. Typically, because of cognitive dissonance and rationalizing, we don't give enough weight to the risk. Mm. And we keep averaging a bad stock or a bad mistake in our portfolio. Mm. Uh, that's how weeds come into your garden. You keep watering the weeds there. Mm. And uh, that leads to, again, bad outcomes for your investments. In that context, what does one do about confirmation bias? How does one handle it going ahead in their investment journey? So confirmation bias is one of the most common mistakes that uh, many people make. Mm -hmm. uh, and there has to be a conscious effort or a process mm -hmm. to take care of it. Earlier, I used to be a fan uh, of a method called devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Here, you assign a particular person in your team hmm. to argue against the particular stock or a security that the team is interested in yeah. uh, investing in. However, I found some flaws in there. Uh, if, suppose, the assigned devil's advocate is a junior, hmm. uh, the person may actually mince words or uh, pull punches in terms of not really discussing risk in detail with the seniors hmm. in the team. Hmm. And uh, that can lead to underappreciation of the risk of a particular investment. Hmm. So the other method that I have found uh, very helpful is a pre-mortem. Hmm. Uh, unlike a devil's advocate here, the entire team is involved in finding out what risks are there hmm. in a particular investment, creating a bull bear case scenario here. Yeah. Pre-mortem is like traveling back from an imagined future. Hmm. Imagine you are in 2025, no. back in 2023. Hmm. you made an investment hmm. and assume that it has gone down, it has made a loss. Hmm. Now the team writes down what are the Possible possibilities scenarios. or scenarios that can could have led to this. Right. And that helps in identifying the risk. Hmm. Now, when you identify risk to your investment, hmm. you actually strengthen your investment case rather than weaken it. Now you know hmm. what are the data points to watch out for and if something is going wrong, you will know when to exit or when to hit a stop loss. So it actually helps your investing. Right. So you become less emotional and more objective in your own decisions Absolutely. that you take. Absolutely. So while we've run out of time today, we will be back with many such interesting episodes on behavioral finance and much more. Stay tuned. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk. Read all scheme related documents carefully.